Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video. In today's video, we're gonna be having a little bit of fun. We're gonna be playing with Chatroot, which kind of gives me a little bit of impression of like Slack or like Mattermost, kind of like your, you know, communications channel like Microsoft Teams. Um, but just another self-hosted kind of chat that you can use to in your organization or just for fun. Um, so we're gonna be playing around with that. Um, I didn't actually prepare this video because um, just have some things going on in my life, a lot of a lot of work, a lot of planning, and, and things like that. So haven't had much time to plan the, this video. Um, so we're gonna just kind of wing it, see how it goes, and hopefully you guys just kind of enjoy um, watching kind of my thought process on just kind of making making something and hoping it works. So, <laughs> um, but we'll have some fun regardless. So uh, stay tuned. Let's let's take a look. So, I did all the prereq stuff um, because I actually had to restart my ser uh, server, so I wanted to make sure everything actually works. So, I updated my DNS to include a new entry already um, for my zone. So, updated the serial number, added the entry down here for chat root, um, updated my Ansible playbooks uh, inventory so that it would include that also in here. Um, not my config, the inventory. Um, it has been a long week, if you can't tell. Um, so, uh, there we go. And we already created the VM. So in this case, you know, my normal workflow, it'll create the VM, patch it, install Docker and Docker Compose, which you will need for this. Um, create the certificate on the step CA server, and then download it with Nginx and reverse proxy what it's using. So, what we'll do, is go to chat woot docker self-hosted and search for that <clears throat> so they have their production deployment guide which is very you know robust here which is great for all you guys kind of learning so in this case you will need docker and docker compose they have specific versions i think my docker compose might be a little bit older than this one but we'll see how, if it works well um in the case you don't know how to uh, install Docker or Docker Compose, you can use their guide. In this case, this is using a Ubuntu slash Debian system, um, but it would be very similar to using a like Red Hat or like Oracle Linux system um, that we have. So, or feel free to watch a few of my automation series video which kind of tells you how to install it too. Um, then we will download the files that uh, they need. So they have the .env, which will be the configuration files. Um, so let's open up tabby terminal here. Do, do, do. And we can SSH to chat root dot dragon dot local. And then what we'll want to do is install wget um, first because it's not install. We use a minimal install. So that package isn't actually there. Um, so they use the wget package, which I also like, like that's what I would use too. So we need to install it. So we installed it. Um, then we can just paste what they have. So it will get their uh, GitHub repo, their .env.example and uh, download it and name it .env. So we can download that. So now if we would cat.env, this is what it would look like in regards to what they had on their GitHub. We'll do the same thing for their Docker Compose file. So we'll get their production YAML Docker Compose. So we'll copy and paste that. <clears throat> so now we have a Docker Compose and a .env. There'll be a few things that we need to update. In this case, we'll want to update the Redis and a Postgres passwords. So they use Nano. I'm kind of a buy guy, um, but you can obviously use whatever, you know, editor you want. Um, but if you use Joe, that one, that one was an interesting one. That one was an interesting one. I didn't really like it. <laughs> um, but you know, whatever flavor of editor you want, feel free to use it. Um, so I'm sure in here we'll see some Redis stuff. So Redis password. Um, and let's just call, and in this case, we can just do Redis passwords Redis. Um, just to keep things simple, Postgres. So we got Postgres username and password. So the, the best part about them doing it like this is it forces me to actually create a password 
um, versus, you know, some darker stuff that I've seen. They have a default password, which would be like, you know, Postgres password, Postgres, Postgres or something. So now I actually am making a bad password on purpose as opposed to using a bad configuration, <laughs> um, which is funny. So we can also update our Docker Compose. So it will prompt us for a Redis password, hopefully somewhere here. Oh, here's the Postgres password. Please provide your own password. And then there should be one for Redis somewhere here, I'm assuming. Redis. Dot env. Oh, oh, this one will just grab it from it, it looks like. env file. Yeah, so this one will just grab it. Let's double check the configuration. Yep, so all we need to update the Postgres password. So not 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 too bad. So we'll save that. All right. And then what we'll do is do the stock and compose run. So apparently we will prepare the database by running migration. So let's prepare the database um, by running these migrations. It'll pull a lot of stuff. So Redis is a caching layer. Um, if you've never used it, kind of like memcache and, and stuff like that. So it's a nice caching layer um, to use. Postgres is, is a database. Um, so you got like MySQL, um, SQL Server, uh, you know, a ton of other databases that you can name. Postgres is one of the, another pretty common one, especially, you know, when you use like any cloud services, um, they usually provide Postgres as one of them. So we'll see how long this takes. I actually don't know because I haven't created this beforehand. Uh -huh. But I don't think it should take too long here. So we, oh, this is using gem stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> created database. So it looks like there was there was some there were some warnings, but it looks like you still created a database. So we'll we'll pretend that's good. <laughs> um, so we'll do a Docker compose up and then hyphen for detach. So Docker compose up and then hyphen for detach, and then I will actually also do. Uh, docker compose uh, uh, f at hyphen f for follow logs. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> it's been a little bit. Okay, so 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 it's already running. Docker compose logs follow. Yeah, I just didn't put it in correctly. Um, so it looks like it's list things are listening. I don't see any any major errors. So got the database created. I think we're probably in a good spot here. So database of subject connections. We can do a doc ps and see services running. So we got all this. Um, so the one thing to note is uh, it will be running on three thousand. Um, so if we were to do like a net stat, which isn't installed. Net tools. Oh, you know I installed net tools. Um, also a very good package to have. Nets that we can see that it is listening on three thousand here. Um, but what we have here is our engine X, which will proxy to three thousand. So if I were to look at my nginx config we can see that it is proxying back to localhost on 3000, which is great. Um, so we can verify the uh, installation by actually curling this API and see if it returns um, 3000. But the other thing that I want to also note um, is if you have, if you want to do like in Nginx um, configuration, they actually do provide that, which I have pretty much all these parameters in here. Um, but if you, in this case, this is using like let's encrypt down here. Um, but we, I, I use my own self-signed CA. So this will be kind of up to you deciding if which route you want to go. Um, if you do want to do a self-signed CA, uh, I do have a video on how to create a step CA server, which is actually very easy and actually works really well. Um, so you can feel free to check that out and, and how I configure a lot of my services with it. Um, so Essentially, we did all this with a self-signed CA, so we can go to HTTPS uh, chat root dragon local, and we get their interface. So this is where the fun begins. We'll type in my name, 
we'll just do Sash Drew. Sash Drew Enterprise. What email? Oh, dragon, dragon local. Some random password, and we don't want to subscribe. Dragon at dragon local. And there we go. So this is kind of the user interface. This is actually my first time actually seeing it like this. So. Um, we'll change the appearance, we'll do a dark theme, uh, make it a little bit easier. But you can kind of see that, you know, the installation was super simple using Docker. Um, then we got, you know, your conversation mentions um, unattended. You can add contacts, reports, so you can actually see like traffic reports and stuff like that. Um, you can actually do a campaign for your website and stuff like that. So it's, you know, kind of very similar to like Slack or like Mattermost. Um, so you need to obviously add more, invite more members, um, but you can get some chats going. Probably, I'm sure there's an API for like doing bots and creation like that. But to get started, that's how you install it. Um, and w maybe we'll create a video on, you know, when I get a few more other users in here to see how it all works. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.